Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. How many of us could say, Lord, I love you. I want to serve you. I'm, I thank you for the freedom. Lord, show, point, have people point to me because they're going to see you. And you wonder why we're experiencing some of the things that we're experiencing right now. That, see, the Lord is wanting to take us closer and closer to that place. It's not a leap where you suddenly are there. This is, this is a process. This is a journey, not a destination. But it's a journey we need to take and not just throw up our hands and say, this is the way it is. I'm just stuck here. Live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And the words, the words behind this next expression about the sinful nature desires what is contrary. There's an adverse relationship. They are enemies. You have two literal life forces that are at war with each other. As I say, sin is not just a list of things not to do. Those are expressions of a nature that is opposed to everything about God's nature. And I'll tell you, God's nature defines his creation. The other life is like a cancer 
It is a wicked life form that destroys everything it touches. And what's deceptive about it is it promises and actually delivers moments of pleasure. It appeals, what it does, what sin nature does is take the gifts of God that he gave us in his creation and perverts them into a selfish use that totally twists his purpose in giving them to us in, his first place, in the first place. God is not against pleasure. We haven't even begun to taste what pleasure is about. There's pleasures forevermore at his right hand, but they will be free from all of this selfish kind of, you know, thing that just takes a hold and takes people down the road like that woman said. She was terrified by how, how out of control this thing felt to her. She just, it become the master. I'll tell you, when he, the, the pleasure that he gives doesn't do that. It sets free. We can enjoy the, the sense of peace with God and the love and, the, and all the fruits that he's given to us. We can enjoy them. The closer we get to him, the more real pleasure there will be. But oh, there's a war going on. There are these adverse life forms. We possess it. Don't you look in the mirror and say, I'm different. You're not. You've got it. And if you listen to it, if you go by it, it's going to take you down a bad road. You know, I think we read recently the scripture about in James 1. But not saying when you're tempted, God's tempting me. Because we're tempted when we're drawn away by our own lusts. And when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, see, it's not an instantaneous thing. Sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Oh, thank God is an answer for that awful beast. Thank God. I hope in one sense, if you've never felt the terror of that beast, that you will. Because what it does is help us never again to take it lightly, to blow it off and just think we can, we can handle life. You can't. If you just run through in your own strength, sin will take you over in one form or another. It will rule your life. So these are in conflict one, one with another. So that you can, This is the reason, so that you do not do what you want. This is the reason Paul felt that helplessness. It's because they were, they were adverse to one another. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. And so now he gives examples. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. These are, this is not sin itself, but this is what sin does. These are some of the things. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. So he's, it's not a comprehensive list, is it? I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a description of the world. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Boy, we need that last one, don't we? Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. So Paul is constantly going back to what's, what God has done for us, isn't he? Thank God there's always some place we can look where there's hope. But listen to what he says here. Verse 25 is revealing. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now what does that tell you? They're not the same thing, are they? It's possible to be born of God's Spirit and have his life in you and yet not walk in, in accordance with that. Why would he spend so much time in the Scriptures warning about this issue if it didn't matter? You know, it's quite a balance to take this thing so seriously that we recognize the power of that beast and yet not to be discouraged 
not to be down, not to be defeated, not to, not to have the sense of futility that you could get if that's all you looked at. I want to have that balance. I believe Paul did, don't you? He was, he was honest enough to say, man, you have got a real enemy here. You've got something that if you're going to serve God, you're going to have to fight. You're going to, have to, you're going to have to gain the upper hand. You're going to have to rule over this thing if you're going to successfully serve God. But thank God we have got the answer to everything that rises up in here. There is a power that is greater that's available to every single one of us. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. But God has given it to everyone who will take a hold of it. And I know everyone who served the Lord any length of time, you know the difference between kind of walking with the Lord and, and there's, a, there's a measure of peace, there's a measure of victory. It's not just feelings. And then all of a sudden you get tired and you kind of drift. And next thing you know, you got things go, start coming into your mind. You got things that begin to, begin to work on you and begin to take you down roads. And, and I'll tell you, if you're not careful, they'll take you down some bad roads. Thank God we've got an answer. But there's that, there's that admonition. Since we live by the Spirit, that we have His life. If we've come to Christ, if we put our faith in Him and recognize, Lord, I come to you as a sinner. I come to you because I need salvation. Lord, blot out, let the blood that was shed back there cover my sins. I need that new life. I need that new life that's going to blossom and going to live forever. I'll tell you, there's a God who'll answer the, the, a heart cry like that. But then the Christian life begins. Then is when we need to learn how to walk by the Spirit, how to spend time. And it's not just religious rites and activities. It's lifting our hearts to Him. You know, when we're awake, it's just lifting our hearts and saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I need you. Lord, help me to, to, to solve this. And I, I feel this thing coming against my mind. And it's not just a bunch of patter. God has to teach us how to, how to live with a consciousness of Him. That's not just activities. Not just, okay, I've got to read this, I've got to do that. You, know, you, can, you can reduce the Christian life to a bunch of duties if you're, if you're not careful. But I'll tell you, there is something real that He's describing here. It's a, it's a real war, but God has made provision that you, can, you and I can have a real victory. And so I, I hope this helps all of us to understand some of the battles that we're in. Romans 6 is certainly a chapter, and I don't want to spend a lot more time. But let me, let me go to Romans chapter 6, because this is the one where Paul is really dealing with this issue in a very straightforward way. He's just informed us that those who, those who, live, in, those who live by the Spirit, those who draw upon God's grace in this life, have the, have the ability by that grace, by that strength that we receive from heaven, to reign in life. That is, we're in charge, sin's not in charge. That's what it comes down to. And where, where grace, I mean, where sin got stronger and stronger because of God's law, God's grace is greater than that. Thank God. Thank God there's a source of help and hope that we have in Him. It's always greater. But now Paul goes back to the, to the cross and to what happened there and the resurrection and helps us to understand that something more happened than simply Jesus dying for the guilt of my sins. It's that he took me with him. I died with him. It's not a matter of how I feel, not a matter of whether I even understand it, because the, the people to whom he was writing, this was new stuff, I'm sure, to them. But this is something God did, knowing that I was going to face the issues that I faced this week, the last week before that, wherever, whenever it was, the, the issues that you're facing right now. God knew that. God knew that there was something that was going to rise up in us that was, that was a contrary to him that we were going to have to battle against and overcome. And he already put us to, the, put us to death back there. So we're not trying to make something happen that, that hopefully will happen someday. We are laying hold of something that's already happened. You understand the difference? Think about it. Praise God. I'm, I'm in a position where I'm, I'm just right there with you. 
trying to lay hold of, what, of the reality of what God has done. When, I, when he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. God put me in the ground. When, I came, when he came forth, there was a new life. That life that's in me was in him when he came out of that tomb. And now he has shared it with me and he shared it with you if you're his. Thank God it's real. Let me see where I want to pick this up. Now, if we died, eight, uh, verse 8, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Thank God. Death no longer has any master, has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. It represented not just a death because of sin, it was a death to it. It was a rejection of that beast. He said, I'm going to face you and I'm going, to, I'm going to beat you the only way that I can. I'm going to surrender my body to, the, to death and I'm going to rise up with a new life that you can't touch. Praise God. He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. There. Now, here's, here's where it gets down to the practical side. Because if he, what he's about to say, if, if, if we did not have, I mean, if it was sort of an automatic thing, we come to Christ and praise God, sin has no more power to do, any, do us any damage. Why would he say what he's about to say? Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. It would make no sense to say that if it wasn't possible. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under law, thank God, but under grace. And he goes on to talk about the fact that when you offer yourself, if you and I are tempted in some area. There's an area of weakness in every, there's areas of weakness in every one of us. Your area might not be getting drunk and living and falling in the gutter somewhere, but you might, you, you, you got other things where Satan has had access to your heart, to your spirit, to your mind, and under the right conditions, he will, he will cultivate that. He will work in that. There's habits that develop in the way we think, the way we act. And God is shining his light in our, in our lives. You wonder why the battles? God is interested in delivering us from strongholds that we may not even realize we have. And so, as painful as it sometimes is, as humbling as it is, thank God for that too, we have reason to rejoice. We have reason to say, thank you, Lord, for the light, because I didn't realize this had such a hold on me. God, help me. God, help me to be honest with myself. Help me to, to face what's going on, to realize the enemy has, has created a, a habit of thinking and acting. You know, I had this thought the other, uh, also thinking about this. He talks about don't yield. But when is it that we actually yield? When do we actually yield? I think I used this, ex this silly example one time. It was from, uh, what was that crazy movie? Sheriff Buford T. Justice was in it. Anyway, you know, you remember what I'm talking about. But anyway, he had arrested some young punks for trying to steal stuff from a car, and he left them putting their hands on the, on the car and said, wait, my deputy will be here. And he says, don't even think about it. Or, you know, don't think about doing anything else. He said, well, you can think about it, just don't do it. But you know that illustrates, I think, sometimes the, the approach we have. 
We think if we don't actually do something that it's okay. At what point are we really yielding? If you're letting negative thinking and, and angry thoughts or, or self-pitying thoughts, if you're letting those possess your mind, you're already yielded. Now that may unfold and lead you down a path to an act. But the yielding is, doesn't happen down here, it happened back here. It's a lot to think about, isn't it? But you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that what Paul is talking about here is not simply a negative battle not to do stuff. It's, we have another alternative. We don't just not yield to this, we yield to him. There is a reaching out after God. There is a reckoning on the reality of what Jesus died to give us. There is something that is real, that God has laid up for you in heaven. It belongs to you. It belongs to me. And the very fact that everybody is so quiet right now tells me that this is a battle. It's a battle to realize that in spite of what I am in myself, that really is mine. Am I the only one that fights this battle? No. We, we, you know, the devil will, as soon as we feel, as soon as we realize the weaknesses or as soon as we sense something that's not quite like it ought to be, oh man, our focus goes to that. And suddenly, oh, this glorious provision, well, that's wonderful for somebody or later or something when I, when I get myself back up to a certain spiritual level, I, I don't deserve it, I don't, you know, I, I just can't quite bring myself to believe that it really is mine now. You know, I believe with all my heart, God is longing to teach us that that's the very time. That is the very time. If we're going to fight the good fight of the faith, that's the time we're going to have to be willing to rise up and say, Lord, that's mine. Devil, you are lying to me. You are doing everything in your power to keep me as your slave. Because Paul talks about if you offer, your, if you offer yourself to somebody and you obey what they tell you, you are making yourself their slave, whether, it's, whether they have a right to it or not. There are people here right now with strongholds in your lives. They didn't happen because, I mean, they, the, the reason they happened is you yielded. I yielded. There are things to which we have habitually yielded in our lives that God longs to, longs to see us delivered from so we can be effective for him. But thank God he's not just standing up there with his arms folded, looking down at us with a disgust. He's saying, straighten up and fly right. He's saying, I know what you're feeling. I've been here. I have the answer. I have a source of life that if you will, if you will exercise yourself, if you will simply pray, if you will lift your heart to me, if you will praise me, if you will fight against, if you will resist those lies and declare them to be what they are, if you will feast upon the promises of my word, if you will do all these things, you, there's a source of life that will flow into you that will give you a strength to stand up and say, devil, I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to yield to your lies. I don't have to go down that road. God has given me the victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 15, if you want to look at that, at the end of the, end of the chapter. But I want to go back just and, and just go back to one scripture that I referred to in Timothy. I'm, I'm not even going to look up where it's at right now. But where he says, fight the good fight of faith, what does he say next? In, in the King James, this is how I tend to remember it, lay hold of eternal life. See, it's not just fight the good fight of the faith, draw upon your resources, get your willpower geared up and you can, no, it's lay hold. There's something there that is real. If we are not victorious in any area of our life, it's not because God has failed. It's because we are not laying hold of what he has given to us. Just like the Israelites, God gave them the land, but they had to go and possess it. This is the land he wants us to possess. 
And so along with God's call and God's working in our lives to make us into the vessels he wants, like Paul, we have these vessels in earthen vessels. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. And there's a part that we play. We're going to have to do some fighting. We're going to have to do some laying hold of what he has given to us through the cross. And so I, I think this thought we need to be left with is not, oh my God, this beast is so terrible and I have no chance. It's rather, I have all that I need in Jesus Christ. His promises, his grace transcend everything that I don't care how bad that beast is. I don't care how long he's been around. He was defeated at the cross. And whether I, whether I can just rise up right now and suddenly be totally free, is, I can start. I can believe God today. I don't have to worry about tomorrow or yesterday. I can put yesterday under the blood. I can let God take care of tomorrow. Right now I can stand there and say, God said this. This is where I stand. I do not have to listen to you. I am going to become the slave, as Paul put it, to righteousness rather than a slave to sin. And I can do that because his grace is greater. And so I'm going to, in my pursuit of what you have called me to, I'm going to stand when you, do, when you allow something in my life that tests my faith. But this is the greatest test. This is the greatest battle we fight. It's not the devil out there. It's in here. It's what's in here. And God has given us the victory over this as well. His salvation has touched every issue that you and I could ever face. So if, you're, if your life is, is caught by something, I want to point you to Jesus. If you're fighting a battle and you're discouraged, I, I point you to Jesus. He is the answer. He rules and he reigns. He didn't do that for himself. He did that and went to the cross because of us and our need. And I don't want to be one that says, it's not enough. It is enough. All that he did. Thank God for Jesus Christ. So fight the good fight of the faith. Lay hold on eternal life. It's there. It belongs to you because he, may, he paid the price. You and I don't have to earn that. We don't have to pay it. He did it. It's complete. To him be the glory forever and ever. Praise God. I believe with all my heart, God is bringing forth a people who are going to rise up and, and begin to say no to things that we have been caught by. And we're going to do it not because we're strong or worthy, because he has won it. He has won the battle at the cross. To him be the glory. Praise God. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. While it is not required, a donation of $10 for DVDs and $5 for CDs is suggested to help with expenses. Also, for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your requests to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then.